All right, so I wanted to talk just a little bit about uh, WebMock uh, and talk about it in the context of this Canvas starter application. So we've put together this app that makes it a little bit easier to build a, an LTI tool that integrates with Instructure's Canvas. It also has the code that you need to talk to the Canvas API. So just really quick, um, in order to enable WebMock, you just need to add it to your Rails application. So drop it underneath your test group in the gem file. Then do run a bundle install. That'll install WebMock. Uh, the next thing you do is drop WebMock into the Rails helper or the spec helper if you're not using Rails, but in our case, we are using Rails. So this will um, bring in our spec. All right, so now the next step is to create this webmock request file. And this is going to live inside of your spec support directory. Um, you can call it anything you like, it's just nice to have it easy to find, so we call it webmock requests. Uh, at the top, if you disable net, net connect, um, but allow localhost, then this will capture any attempts that the application makes to contact third-party APIs, and it will actually provide an error in your um, tests. Uh, I've set up a couple of things ahead of time. Um, because we are talking to Canvas, I went ahead and made some real requests, and I captured headers. Um, if you actually want to test the headers, then you'll need to set up your headers, you need to set up specific headers. In our case, we're mostly not testing the headers, so I just have a generic capture of the header data, and um, that can be output for each one of the requests. Um, you can see down here I've captured the string request, which just happens to be JSON. It can be anything. Um, when the HTTP calls are made, all of the data is essentially transferred as a string. So the payload could be any number of things. In our case, it just happens to be JSON. Uh, then down inside of the RSpec configure, we can stub out the requests and say, if a git request is made to this URL, um, and you can use regular expressions so that you can capture a whole bunch of different URLs. So in our case, if a git request is made to this URL, then we're going to return a 200 we're going to give it this specific body, and in this case, it is a, it's more JSON. Um, I just, I cut the two JSON objects into different pieces so we could use them down below, but it's just going to return an array of JSON objects that has been serialized as a string. You can see here's the canvas headers from up above, um, and then we can also set up a post and a put. All of these just so happen to be the exact same URL. Um, we could even refactor this out into a variable if we want. Um, that might be uh, kind of nice. So, like, you could do this and say canvas um, external tool URL is, is that. So, this basically says any attempt made to this specific endpoint will result in. Um, in a call that is, is stubbed out. And I, I've set up example.com just so that in no circumstance will it actually call a real API. Uh, then what you have to remember to do is in each of your individual uh, tests, just use example.com as the URL. So. What does percent R do again? Um, the percent R just says this is a regular expression. Okay. So. It lets us do run this against SSL yep. and you know whatever else, and in our case, this course ID could be any number of things. Uh, and this is kind of a lousy regular expression, but it works. So whatever. Uh, okay, so one of the tests that I already have in place uh, is for the Canvas API. So we have a library in place that lets us talk to Canvas, and you can see here's a Git request. So Git um, any LTI tools that have been installed in a course. This is an update that will update the configuration of any LTI tools for the course, and this will set up the, an LTI tool. In each of these cases, you have to pass in the tool configuration, which we won't get into, but 
it's a big XML document that tells Canvas how to set things up. So I wanted to try this out. Uh, so I, I set up a test for Git Course LTI tools. So I've got that right here in the specification. So Git Course LTI tools. And all this does is it says it should find um, and install, install LTI tools for the given course. So we expect that this, the call to that API endpoint will return an, a collection of installed tools. And then we just look at the first one and we say, is it equal to fake? Uh, and in our case, uh, going back to the webmock requests, I have these two objects and you can see that both of them have a consumer key of fake. So uh, sure enough, they're gonna they should pass. All right, so now if I go out and run this, <clears throat> um, actually, you can see I've already run this, so let's not run it again, but you can see that the specifications pass uh, and that we're not getting any calls out to the actual um, API, which doesn't even exist, right? Like the Canvas API does not actually exist at example.com. All right, so let's let's run through. Well, uh, let's talk about a little bit more about why you would do this because this seems like a really trivial test, and it is um, because basically what we're doing is saying, you know, call this method and return us the data that we've told you to return us to us. It becomes more useful in higher level uh, situations. So I have this uh, courses Canvas courses LTI, which is a wrapper that figures out what needs to happen. It, it, pulls up all the existing LTI tools, it determines if a tool already exists. Um, if it does, it figures out all the latest settings and then configures those correctly. And at the end of the day, it calls update course LTI tool. If the tool doesn't already exist, it calls create on that tool. Uh, again, these are actual API calls, but back in our webmock requests, we've said don't actually call a real endpoint. Instead, if you get a post, get the data from, from this stub right here, which is going to return um, a single LTI tool, which is what Canvas will return to you if an update or a create is successful. So let's, I'm going to go ahead and run these in the background just so you can see um, that this hopefully still passes even after our tiny little refactor there. Uh, so. Let run for just a second. And it does. So that's good. Uh, so the next thing that you run into is, well, how do I get this stuff in the first place? Like that's a, you don't want to be typing this out. This is really ugly. And um, even if you go to the documentation, typically the way that they present the results of an API call is as an object, um, and most API providers are going to provide the data in some sanitized form, not in the form that you would get it directly off the wire. So let's walk through how you capture some of this. So say I wanted to write uh, a new test. In here I have a method, I have to find it really quickly, oh, I have this method right here called courses which calls the Canvas API, and if you give it a user ID, it will give me the courses for a specific user. Otherwise, it just says, give me all the courses that I have access to. So let's write a quick test for that. So if I come into my specification, let's put it right, let's put it right here. Um, describe courses. And let's should retrieve courses from the Canvas API. Okay, so courses is going to equal, we've already set up an API instance that, um, actually we should show that just really quickly. Uh, this API instance is set up with a provider URL and a token. The provider URL is this base URI, which happens to be example.com. So that's how we can know for sure that it's gonna hit our mocked requests. All right, so now when I call api.courses, um, this is going to fail. And we'll, you know, we'll have something like expect uh, courses dot 
length to, I don't know, be greater than zero or something like that, but we'll worry about that here in a moment. All right, so if I, if I run this now, we should actually get an error, uh, and this is nice to see. Okay, so we failed. Uh, let's see here. I was hoping it would output and tell us that we did not have the that the endpoint is available. We're actually getting a not found exception. So for some reason, this is actually calling out to example.com and attempting to, to talk to it, which is strange. So, let me test look right. Um, OK. So let, let's go ahead and stub this out and pretend like it gave us the, the error message that says, here's how you need to stub out this method. Um, so the way that I would normally get this data is I would come into a place and maybe this is hackish, maybe somebody else has a better way to do it. Um, but I just come in and say result equals API courses and then just drop a debugger in place. Then I can look at the result of that and I can get the, the body of that request and drop it in here. So. The uh, web mock does, or no, uh, you can use the CR gem as well to record a bunch of requests if you have a lot of them. Yeah, so I, I've used that in the past. Yeah, and I looked at VCR briefly. Um, it looked like it would be really handy. I just didn't want to go through the pain of integrating it. It just was yeah. pretty easy to do, do it this way, so that's why I ended up doing it the way. I it, it just kind of depends on... Uh, how complicated your your stuff is going to be, and yeah, so yeah, and I I kind of like having this level of control because if I need to set some specific value in this data for whatever reason, I can just come in and edit my own data. And I think with VCR you can do that too. It drops all of the results in a in the fixtures directory. Um, but yeah, like the YAML files. Yeah. So this was just pretty easy to, to do. So I just stuck with it. All right. So here we have our Canvas starter application. It says do the OAuth dance with one of the Canvas instances. So I'm just going to log in and hit log in there. Okay. So now I've got this little bit of code here, and I should be able to type result, and I, I can, and that gives me this big, huge, ugly result object. Um, now this is, where I'm using HTTP party to actually make the API request to the endpoint, uh, and if I look at parse response, it will give me a nice object, but I can also just do result.body, and that will give me the result of that call as a string. I can just take that, copy and paste it. So I can bring that right over into my mocked requests here. And I can say um, canvas courses equals that thing. And it's really, really long and really, really ugly, but it doesn't matter. Uh, so now I can say, all right, let's mock out a request. So stub request, a get to um, basically this URL right here. Should return a status of 200. And actually, we can use the new syntax. And the body should be this canvas courses up here. And the headers 
which will actually be wrong because like the content length is wrong and whatnot, but we're gonna just not care for right now. Um, so now whenever a request is made to this endpoint, uh, we should hit the web mock and return that instead. Let's try it really quickly and see if it worked or if there's some other error that I'm gonna have to track down. Uh, what did it not like? Whoops. Let's try that one. All right, so at least it's not crashing, and it looks like it passed. So now we have successfully stubbed out the request to courses, and we can use that not only in this test, but if for some reason some of our other code needs to make a call to that API endpoint, it'll hit this mock request instead of hitting the actual endpoint.